Hey, welcome back everybody, good to see you. Let me paint you a picture here. It is 2009, you're 24 years old, everybody around you is losing their job, and this dumpster fire of an economic recession has hit and everything has imploded. Big businesses, local businesses, they're all going out, they're all shutting shop, and people are losing their homes. Flooding the real estate market with access inventory and crashing home prices. Everybody's scared, what do you do? I'll tell you what I did. I took every last penny that I had available to me and I put a down payment on a luxury condo in the heart of the most sought after neighborhood in downtown. Now I knew it was a good investment, but little did I know that the condo was gonna be such a great investment that it would tee up my early retirement and allow me to leave my day job and give me massive cash flows and an ROI of over 250% within 60 months. Let's talk about how I did it. Slap hands, bump fists, let's go. What's up? I'm just down here in downtown and I, we were strolling around. I lost 40 bucks out of my pocket, kind of bummed about that, but I got to come and check out one of my original investments that made me a lot of money and that was afforded me to build the shipping container house that you guys see me filming at. So my unit was right here and I was one of the first ones to rent it out through uh, like HomeAway, the short term rentals. And I basically was able to dictate my own price. So lesson of the day is find what's working. If it's new, jump on it. If it's a good wave, ride it all the way till the end. All right, peace out. All right, again today, I'm not gonna ask you to sub, but if you want to, you can go right here or right there. But I want you to answer a question down in the comments section. In this neck economic recession, which it is coming, are you gonna buy real estate? Tell me if you think it's gonna be a smart decision or a poor decision, and why? Right down below. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, so I know you're curious about how much money I made off of that one property. And I'm gonna show you those numbers real fast. I want you to keep in mind that when I show you numbers or any other YouTuber or any other data that you look at, they're lagging indicators. They help present a story that has already unfolded. The real value is how to create those numbers. And I'm gonna go over the four lessons that I learned from investing in property after I share these numbers with you. Okay, so stick around. Hey guys, all right, so here we are over at my desk and we're gonna jump into Excel here. So before we jump into this, I wanna give you a little bit of background on what I did with the property. I was able to get it at a pretty deep discount. Not as deep as 40, 50% off, but I did get it at, at about 25% off of its original asking price just the year prior, which gives us, as you can see right here, is a total purchase price of $380,000 and some change once you get factor in closing costs and such. I put down just around $80,000 as a down payment. The agent commissions I ended up paying once I sold the property was $15,000. Just some numbers to keep in mind. Another thing about this is that once we start looking at expenses, I did get an interest only loan. Interest only loans are, are brilliant ways of financing and leveraging cash to minimize your monthly cash outlay or expenses for your mortgage, but also maximizing tax write-offs. One pro tip for you is when you're investing in real estate and it's an investment property and you have an exit strategy, you almost never want to pay anything towards principal. Only pay the interest. Paying principal on a short-term investment property doesn't make any sense. Your cash is better saved and used elsewhere. All right, so let's jump into this. So right here off the bat, you can see the average monthly rent from it jumps from a thousand to five thousand. That thousand is that first year I actually lived in the unit and I rented out one of the bedrooms for a thousand bucks, which was basically half of my expenses. All right, now this is where things get interesting. After year one, I actually had to travel a lot for work and then I was traveling a lot for, uh, for pleasure and I had other properties. Once I found out how profitable it could be, I actually tried to maximize it. So over the course of the next four years, you'll see that the average monthly rent was about 5,000 a month or 60,000 a year. This fluctuated a little bit, but I'll get into that a little bit here. It was that I was averaging about $5,000 a month or $60,000 a year. But you'll see here that for the next four years, I cash flowed about $3,000 a month or $36,000 a year. Any of you landlords, property owners out there who own single family residences, multifamily homes, off of one unit to cash flow over $3,000 a month is insane. Now, going back to what I said earlier, I actually cash flowed better than just $3,000 a month. I'll talk about it more after I share these numbers with you, but I was actually cash flowing between $15,000 to $20,000 in certain months, which as any entrepreneur or business owner knows, is one of the best feelings and what you need to do to grow your business. All right, so the entire plan of this condo or this investment property was to only hold on to it for five years. And so in year five, I decided to sell. But my sales price ended up being 550, which gave me a profit of $155,000 once I took out the agent's commission. Now, if you guys seen my other video, I'll link it right here 
or maybe it's over here, one of these corners, I'll link the video of how I sell my own homes and save a ton of money. However, I always offer the buyer's agent a commission. Um, the reason behind that is because you simply, you, you won't sell your home or it's gonna be very challenging to sell your home if you don't offer uh, the agent something to bring the buyers to you. But the good news is that I don't have to pay that high of a price. I just have to be competitive. And then obviously I don't pay any type of commission towards a seller's agent. So what you'll notice here is that at the end of five years, I had an ROI of 259%. That is not as insane as some major windfalls, but that's pretty dang good for a 24 year old on one property. Now, during that time, 2009 to 2014, 15 era, the stock market was on a rally, more specifically right around 2011, 2012. Now let's make an assumption here that the stock market was increasing year over year at 17%, which is insane. But let's say year over year it was 17%. If I took my original $80,000 and I put it into the stock market, just a general index fund, year over year, my ROI would have been 119. Still an amazing, outlandish, crazy return, but still the real estate market beat it. And that's about finding deals. All right, let's jump back over and I'm gonna go over the reasons why and how to create numbers like this and what you should be looking out for. All right, let's head over there. Okay, so I hope that shed a little bit more light about how you can actually make really good money if you take advantage of a down market and you understand how to find deals. But let's go into more of the why and the how to create those numbers. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a bonus tip right here. And it comes from none other than the legendary investor, Warren Buffett. The saying is, be greedy when the masses are fearful, be fearful when the masses are greedy. Essentially what this really boils down to is do the opposite of what everybody else is doing because the pendulum is gonna swing. And if you can catch that pendulum before it swings back, you can capture a lot of value and make a lot of money. And this is precisely what I did here. When everybody was pulling out of the stock market and these luxury condos that were brand new were being sold from 40 to 50% off of their original asking prices. This was in the heart of downtown. There's not any more land down there. The only way to create more value or to create more land is to actually bulldoze a building and then put up a new one. So I knew that these properties were really valuable. I just wish I had more money and more leverage to purchase more, which leads into number two, which is why real estate versus other types of things like stocks is control and a physical asset. In stocks or any other type of paper investment, you don't really have much control. You kind of put your money in there and you might be able to pull it out, you might not be able to pull it out depending on the type of investment. In real estate, it's not liquid, but I have full control over what I do with it. Anything from as simple as how I design it, how I remodel it, all the way to how I rent it. And then also it's a physical asset. If I need to, I can use that asset and I can change how I use it. Number three, the third lesson is cash is king. More specifically, cash flow. A lot of people get this confused. You can't create this with stocks outside of dividends. And even then you're reinvesting the dividends back into the stock typically. In this case, remember when I said I was making between three to four times more than the average monthly income from the rental? That's because there's something called prepayment. And in business, prepayment is just as good, if not better, than actually a cash sale. And the reason is because your customer, clients, tenants, whatnot, they're paying you ahead of time. So you're getting cash before you render services. So in certain months, I was depositing fifteen and twenty thousand dollars just off of one property because it was getting booked out in advance and getting and I was getting paid in advance. That cash flow allowed me to keep a very big cushion for my war chest or whatever you want to call it, but it also allowed me opportunities to go take that money and reinvest in other properties or other investments or opportunities I was looking at. Remember, in business and personal life, I don't care what it is, you always want cash. Never run out of cash. The fourth lesson is recognizing a deal. Now, I know some of you out there are awesome at figuring out retro games, board games at garage sales. You might find an awesome designer skirt at Nordstrom Rack. For me, I find killer deals on yogurt at the grocery store and I get excited. But look, this here is $6.49 at my grocery store. It's not inexpensive. Look how much I paid for it. $1.49. But that same type of deal hunting can be applied to investments. Instead of making or saving $100 here and there, you can make or save several hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the true pros are out there making millions to tens of millions of dollars off of deals like that. Right now, if you follow Gary Vee, 
In 2019, he is stashing away millions of dollars just waiting for the next recession to hit so he can go out there and buy up everything that he sees value in. And the number five is riding the wave. And this is probably something that resonates with me because I'm a surfer. But basically, once you find a new opportunity and you're able to get into it, ride that baby as long as you can. But one thing is don't get too greedy. You have to know and realize when you're gonna get off of that wave. If you don't, guaranteed you're gonna hit the rocks. Nothing lasts forever. So just like I showed you when I was in the Excel spreadsheet with the numbers, I had an exit plan. Always have an exit strategy and set yourself up for the future. So as you can see, there's a lot of money to be made in real estate. Obviously, I got in at the beginning of something really great and I was able to generate a lot of value and create a good amount of money that helped set up my lifestyle. But you can take advantage of opportunities and I promise you there's always opportunities out there. It's how you can set yourself up for it, whether it's fixing your credit score, saving up cash, start educating yourself in the industry that you want to be investing in. These are all things that you can do to get started. The only thing that's stopping you is not taking action. So take action, you're gonna make mistakes, learn from them, and go create some value. Thanks so much for watching, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.